Let's talk about Honeywell Quantum. Pat, this is a something we talk about quite a bit on the show, um, you know, making Quantum cool again, making Quantum cool, uh, and making Honeywell cool. I mean, Honeywell is a really interesting company. We've talked a lot about the fact that more and more becoming a tech company. Uh, at our 6.5 Summit, we had the CES CEO, Darius Adamchek, join us. We also had Tony Utley, uh, CEO of Honeywell Quantum, join us. And we had a special guest, uh, Ilias Khan, of uh, Cambridge Quantum Computing, which ended up announcing right around the time of our summit, yep, maybe it was because of our summit, but they happened to announce a new joint venture, 55% owned by Honeywell, that would be Honeywell Quantum Systems and CQC together. Well, this announcement included three breakthroughs that for the first time, the two companies were going to co-announce. So despite the fact that this deal has not completely, uh, you know, been announced and formalized yet, that'll happen later in the year, this announcement, did put some breakthroughs of the companies on the map. So let's talk about what they are. The first, you know, Pat, remember when we were talking in quantum volumes of like under 50 when we first started talking to, to Honeywell, it was just a few qubits. Well, they were able to achieve quantum volume of 1,024, uh, doubling its record from only a quarter ago. So you see how much faster this is getting. And, um, uh, you know, with ion trapping, as we know, these things tend to have uh, more longevity because of the way these uh, qubits are managed in ion, the ion trapping platform versus superconducting, which has its own value. But um, in this particular case, this was a big breakthrough. They moved very quickly in just a couple of years. The second was something called real-time error correction. Well, you know, the state of the qubit has to remain in a, in a consistent uh, at a, in a consistent state so they can actually handle solving the problems that you're put applying the quantum computer to solve. Well, if the, if the errors aren't corrected in real time, the outcomes will not be good. So the ability for this system to actually correct itself in real time is a big breakthrough, and it's something that Honeywell has been talking about for a long time, but has been now able to demonstrate. And then the third was an announcement from CQC. And CQC, really, if you don't understand, Honeywell builds the physical, the hardware, the machines, CQC has always been a partner. They build the software. So you think about as we move things from hardware to software, we move to software to find, we move towards, uh, you know, containers and we move to the DPUs, all the things we talk about regularly on these shows. This is kind of the same thing. We're starting to apply software, whether that's simulation, whether that's putting a, uh, a simulation into Azure or using Amazon Bracket to do quantum simulation from a computer using an interface. It's the software that's going to bring this stuff to life. Well, CQC has been working on an algorithm that's going to enable these quantum machines to be more efficient, effectively doing bigger and larger and more complex calculations using fewer qubits. And so it announced that it was, it's been able to achieve this. Um, it's got this new algorithm, and this is going to be really important for quantum going forward. I'll leave this thought here. The future of quantum isn't really so much just about these machines and their ability to uh, maintain a, an error-free or low error state. Um, these machines are something else. They're very wild. If you ever see one, you'll know what I mean. You check the picture of the blog post that Pat and I put up about these. Uh, it doesn't look like a computer in any way that you think, but it's really going to be a marriage between classical computing and quantum computing. And it's going to be software that you and I and everyone else on the planet can manipulate the way we do our CRM, our ERP, our productivity, our collaboration, our web experiences, and our apps that are going to use the power of the quantum computing to solve problems that our classical computers either can't solve quickly or can't solve at all. That's when it gets done. Don't underestimate the value of software when you're talking about the future of quantum. Wow, Daniel, you are a quantum, you just sound like a quantum computing expert or something. Thanks, buddy. You know? I practiced that all night. I know, it yeah, wasn't we're, gonna have to get, we're gonna have to get a propeller for you. No, see, I, I liked, this trifecta of announcements because it hit on nearly everything that's important. So quantum volume, which is raw performance with good qubits, um, the error correction that um, is, is required over time because you don't have perfect qubits that last like the whole time, right? Um, and an algorithm which increases efficiency. So I, I like the trifecta and you know, even though the deal is not closed yet, you know, the JV, um, it doesn't, the co new company doesn't even have a new name, right? But we have CQC and Honeywell uh, uh, working together on announcements. Now, they were always working together uh, uh, before, but, you know, now it's going to be more like, you know, a marriage as opposed to, uh, you know, uh, dating, 
So I like the way it was rolled out. It hit uh, you know the three elements that that make the quantum world uh, go around. And I don't know about you, Daniel, but I'm I'm honored to be part of of this as we go in in the future. Because if you look at at the different eras of of computing, I mean, this is you know uh, you and I were not around when mainframes first came out, but they're still here. Uh, we were here for client server uh, and then uh, cloud computing uh, and and mobility, but this this is different, right? This this is going to reset uh, everything. I'm convinced, even though it is the third or fourth try uh, for quantum computers. You know, it, it took AI and machine learning three or four uh, rotations to get uh, 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 to be real uh, as well. Yeah, absolutely. I still remember not that long ago meeting a person who got a PhD in artificial intelligence in the 1980s. Uh, so for all the people out there that think that it's a brand new thing and it's something of the 2010s and 20s, it is not, nor is quantum. Sometimes it isn't about being first, it's about getting it right. And sometimes it is about being first.